Bear Bets is back. I am your host, Chris the Bear Felica. I am joined again by Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P, and Will. We'll hop on in again for the uh, the gambling group chat later in the show. Good to be back after not being with you guys last week. But uh, things certainly uh, changed in, uh, in the awards markets last week in the NFL, and certainly with, with how we viewed some uh, some teams involved. It, it just seemed every single week, uh, the slate may look like less inspiring. All these backup quarterbacks are playing. Uh, these games have big spike, but the National Football League always delivers every week and provides us with uh, something unexpected, like a like the Raiders not completing a pass for three quarters and still going into Kansas City and winning, or uh, Brock Purdy throwing four picks, two on deflections and one on a, uh, and his arm was hit in the middle of play. Um, you on the Baltimore Ravens at the talk of the ten. Lamar Jackson is the MVP, and, and now you know, Joe Flacco is the uh, the comeback player of the year. So. Uh, crazy Christmas weekend in the NFL, Jeff, that's for sure. And I'm sure uh, we'll be sitting here next week talking about something else ridiculous that none of us saw happening. This is uh, not a year I can remember for a long time. I mean, it, the, the parody of this league right now, uh, you know, the there's no elite team. I mean, you get Ravens, I guess, you'll call them elite. I mean, are we sure they beat the you? Dolphins this weekend? Um no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would call. I would call no team elite. And I know that the DVOA put the Niners in one of the kind of elite teams of all time, and the Ravens are up there. But I, I don't look at any team this year and think, okay, that team's winning the Super Bowl. Look in the AFC, the Ravens. Uh, you have the Dolphins. We we like we like the Bills. We have money in the Bills. Um, I mean, the Chiefs. We'll talk about them. I I don't think they're going to win the Super Bowl this year, but it wouldn't surprise you if they got there. If they just sort of figured it out, right? Sure. There's four teams in the AFC. Maybe they missed it. Maybe the Browns. I mean, Flacco. I think turnovers are an issue, in my opinion, for the playoffs. But the Browns. I I think I don't think are out of the question to be a championship game. On the NFC side, you have the Niners. You have the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Lions. I mean. The Rams are feisty. Like, there's no one, in my opinion, that's a lock on either side to make a Super Bowl. Where last year at this point, it was Chiefs, Bengals. It was it was what Eagles, Niners. Like, that, that, those are the four teams. And so, I think now um, it's it's pretty fun to see as we head into Week 17, where uh, where we can find wagers, where we can find you know the ability to to get some some future value. But more than anything else, these are fun games, man, because. Each weekend feels like you don't know what's going to happen, which is what the NFL is, by the way. It's what the NFL always is. why it's the best. Because, uh, you know, and you're getting big games this weekend with the Ravens and the Dolphins and, and you have the Niners, excuse me, the, uh, the Cowboys and you have the Lions. So there's a lot of fun this week. Bear, do you want to get your, your wagers for the week right now? Yeah, we, we can do that. I, I, was just, I was just looking at half the league is seven and eight or eight and seven. So that, that oh, yeah. kind of gets into Every week now. It's been awesome, yeah. But yeah, I, I would I would say I, I didn't mean to like slight the Ravens when you're saying like elite there, but you just think like this is the same team that lost to, to the Steelers, team that needed a, oh, yeah. a, a a kick return against the the Rams where there were three block in the back calls that should have been called. They're like like it's it's and even the Niners and the Niners have certainly had their share of struggles this year. So while. Yeah. Well, while it still feels like, I mean, the Niners are still the class of the NFC. It, it feels like more of a one-off for me than anything else. It's just something about, I, I don't know why, I, I just can't shape this feeling like like the, the Ravens are set to lose in the AFC playoffs. I, I don't know why I feel like we're headed towards this Bills nine. Because, because Bear, of the quarterbacks that are left, that are kind of playoff quarterbacks right now, I believe Omar Jackson has one playoff win. And, and I know we're doing the quarterback wins discussion, and I'll bite me. Who cares? Uh, one, one, you know, one win, right, in the playoffs. Tua, to my knowledge, has zero playoff wins, correct? correct. Now, obviously Mahomes, but the Chiefs aren't as, the Chiefs aren't as good. Um, Joe Flacco has won a bunch of playoff games 10 years ago, right? Yep. He's the Browns quarterback. Josh Allen has won playoff games, but the Bills have kind of been backsliding, right? It was it was AFC Championship game, then it was road divisional loss, and then it was home divisional loss. And then you end up to the NFC. Brock Purdy has one playoff win. Jalen Hurts has a bunch. Like, like they're trustworthy. Dak Prescott, I think, has one playoff win. Um, Baker Mayfield, if you like the Bucs, I believe one playoff win. Um 
No, Stafford, yeah, Stafford's won a bunch of playoff games, but the Rams are, are not as good as the other teams. Jared right. Goff has had playoff wins, but a different. he was with the Rams, not with the Lions. I mean, like, so there's just not a lot of quarterbacks where you're like, yep, that's the guy I trust to win these playoff games. And a lot of times it comes down to that, right? You have Tom Brady or you have or Patrick Mahomes. Like, you trust these guys to win a bunch of these playoff games because they've done it in the past, and we're trusting a lot of quarterbacks that haven't done it as well in the past. And so I think that's a, a big holdup for who we think might come out of each of, of, of each conference in the end. Yeah. I mean, and it, and it, and it makes it fun. So it's so, something, I mean, someone will, yes. One, I, I thought one of those guys who we just mentioned with Lamar, yeah. one, one player win, maybe, he, maybe he leads the, the Ravens super, super bowl and he can kind of kind of yeah. shatter that narrative, which would be a great story. Yeah. And uh, so you chose the two most illuminating games, two most exciting games to wager on this week <laughs> for your for for your bear bets. Before we get to the best bets, at the end of the show, let's start off with the one in Seattle, Pittsburgh at Seattle. Seattle's favored by three and a half in this game. Pittsburgh eight and seven on the season. They're one win away. Bear from continuing. Mike Tomlin should have never having a losing season. They're also eight and seven against the spread, but they're only five and ten to the over. Seattle eight and seven overall. Uh, good, healthy eight. Five and two against the spread. What do we got here, Bear? I like the Seahawks minus the three and a half here. I, I, I think Seattle has seemingly been in a game every week. And last two weeks, they kind of stole a game that they probably should not have won. So here they are controlling their playoff destiny. I, I do like the situation here, though, for Seattle. Yeah. They're, they're, they're Seattle but Pittsburgh beating the Cincinnati Bengals last week. Was it was it was was great. I liked see I liked Pittsburgh last week, but let let's not make this out to be like the Steelers have found their quarterback of the future. There, there's still a reason Mason Rudolph hadn't started the game in two, two plus years. It's not like he suddenly d- discovered like he's going to be this starting quarterback in the league. I still don't think the Steelers' offense goes on the road and plays one. Like I think they'll do a good enough job against Seattle uh, against the Seattle offense with that defense and the way. Highsmith and Watt and those guys are playing to uh, to do well, but but I think they've shown some vulnerability uh, against the run at times this year. Uh, I think with Walker being in better shape now, I think that could open up some things. Maybe keep Seattle could keep their defense off the field as well. So I, I like I like Seattle again. They've been involved in a bunch of close games, but I think this game has like twenty three thirteen written all over it. So uh, I do like the Seahawks to uh, to get that win and. Uh, Keep their playoff hopes alive. I don't know if I if I trust Seattle, but I do know that one thing I do not trust is Mason Rudolph on the road <laughs> after a big Steelers win. Like no no chance, yeah. right? I mean, the poor guy. He, he had a he had a scramble in that game last week where I thought he was going to die. I, there were three defenders coming right at him. Like this guy is going to die. He's going to get hit so hard. He's going to break in half, and that'll be the end of Mason Rudolph. Like he's going to do something dumb in this game. I, I just know um, it was classic Steelers, by the way, to have like George Pickens have the best game of his career after being of called out for not blocking. <laughs> but uh, they're on the road against Seattle, who needs this game. So does Pittsburgh, by the way. Uh, I think Seattle's the right side here. Let's get to your second game here: uh, a battle of NFC South stalwarts, the New Orleans Saints at Tampa Bay Bucks. Bucks favored by three. Saints are seven and eight, <laughs> but an awful. Four, 10 to one against the spread. Worst record in the league Ooh. covering games. Bucks are eight and seven. Playing good football right now. And they're a win on Sunday. And a Falcons loss. I'm coaching the NFC South. The Bucks are 10 and five against the spread bear. Where are we going here? Four, 10 and one for the New Orleans Saints against the number. Uh, I'm going to hope that that becomes five, 10 and one because I do like the Saints <laughs> uh, plus the full, plus the full three this week. Like hey, Tampa isn't good enough to walk out onto the field and beat everybody. You give this team all the credit in the world. They were four and seven, one four straight. Now they're first place in the division and they're there. They're a couple of wins away against the, the Saints and Panthers from winning that division and hosting a playoff game. But I, I still think New Orleans off of that terrible performance uh, against the Rams last week. I mean, that, that was a very deceiving final score. There was no way that that game was as close as that score indicated. I don't know. Tampa just doesn't even try and run the ball anymore. If New Orleans can kind of gear up against against Baker and that offense, I think they can. I think they can do enough to hang around in this game. And this is your classic zig when everyone zags in the NFL. When you when all of a sudden the Buccaneers are the toast of the town. Mate Baker's having a great year. Going to win the division. Derek Carr is terrible. New Orleans needs to blow it up. Like we've seen this act before. So I, I took the Saints plus three. 
Buddy, you might need some pain medicine to to watch this game. Oh, I, mean, I got you, I got you plenty of it. Don't Carr. worry. <laughs> you, you you have De- you have Derek Carr. You're trusting Derek Carr on the road at any point in any of his points of his career. I mean, God God bless you, Bear. I couldn't do it. Uh, could, I I did not trust the Saints at all. Uh, I'm not sure I trust the Bucks either. So hopefully you're you're medicated well to watch this game. Because here's the thing: I watch the games I wager on. I don't care how good or bad the teams are. If I wager on the game, I'm taking a peek on. So the recap: Seattle minus three and a half, and you have New Orleans plus three. We will have our best bets as usual later in the show. It's now time for gambling group chat. It's going to be Sammy P, Will Hill, the Bear, and myself talk all things NFL, all the futures. We have a little bit of a pity party over all the lost money that we uh, that we saw flush down the drain because of a certain bartender with the Brock Purdy wagers. We talk about Coach of the Year. We talk about anything NFL. Here is a gambling group chat for the National Football League on Bear Bets. Time again for the gambling group chat where I believe we have a very salty Will Hill in addition to a very salty bear after seeing our Brock Purdy MVP futures go up in smoke on uh on monday night so uh sometimes you make a great bet well sometimes you get a great number and sometimes uh it just doesn't work out so uh we'd make the same bets all over again i do imagine it was just it was just one of the one of the one of those nights like for I mean, four picks maybe a couple were on his fault but nobody cares about that now lamar jackson uh, around minus 170 or so with your favorite uh mccaffrey four to one two a ten ten to one pretty 12 to one josh allen 13 to 1. Those are the current uh, numbers I see at DraftKings for uh, for MVP. So, Will, um, is there a bet still to be made in this market? Um, or is it kind of fait accompli that, that Lamar is going to win? Uh, I usually look forward to these podcasts. I forgot what we were talking about. I forgot we had to talk about Purdy. I, it was really in rough shape because I bet it 22 to 1 in week three. I, I, you know, Monday was rough. Tuesday morning, w- waking up was rough. I finally started to get over it. Now we got reopened the wound here. <laughs> I don't know that there's a bet. I think the lesson going forward is, man, nothing really matters until late. So look for guys with longer odds, middle of the season, late surgers, that kind of thing. Could it flip again? I feel like if Lamar's in the same position Purdy was in last week, or as long as he plays well and they win, it's going to be Lamar. But I don't know. Could Tua steal it if they beat Buffalo, beat Baltimore, and they're the one seed? Could Tua steal it? Could McCaffrey steal it if all the quarterbacks don't play well and you know it goes to somebody else? Could Allen come out of nowhere? I, to be honest, I, I mean, to, to answer your question, I don't see a great bet. I don't want to lay a minus 170. I'm still salty. Look, my party's going to die a painful death. I don't know, Sammy. Is there anything? Let's just say you had no bets. Hey, I want to bet the MVP. Is there anything right now you jump in on? Probably not. Yeah. I mean, I had Tyreek at a very, very good number, and and that went to hell when he rolled his ankle, and he's not going to win the MVP now, even though I still think he's more valuable than Tua. I was looking at the list of total touchdowns, and I know we we often fall for touchdowns instead of yards because Lamar doesn't have a lot of touchdowns compared to the most guys. Lamar's 24 total touchdowns. Josh Allen has 40 touchdowns this year, passing and Crazy. rushing. I mean, to me, that's that's like the most like unknown stat of the year. Like, If I were to ask 10 people who leads the NFL in touchdowns right now, I don't know that more than one would say Josh Allen. He's got 40, Hertz has 35, Prescott has 32, Purdy has 31. So from a touchdown standpoint, Josh Allen is probably in the mix. But I think we also have to knock Josh Allen for losses against the Patriots and losses against the Broncos and, yes. and stuff like that. Um, it, I just I'm kicking myself because last week we were talking about San Francisco, Baltimore, and and our team clipped it off and posted it. And I said, I think I'd rather bet Lamar five to one MVP than Ravens money line. And of course I didn't do it. And I just, I, because I, I bought into the Purdy thing. Like I did, I thought, I thought Niners were going to win that game. It all lined up for this, you know, Mr. What is it? Mr. Irrelevant to be drafted in 22 and win the MVP in 23. Like it was all there for him. Yep. And this guy laid a freaking egg. He turned into a damn pumpkin on Christmas. And, and that it, it, it sucks. You guys made great bets, but that's the problem with gambling. You can make the right bet. You can get a fantastic number and guys or teams just don't deliver. I think you would make that bet all over again. I don't want to speak for you guys, but I mean, the bet Brock Purdy is 22 to one when he gets to minus 200 on Christmas is the right bet. It's the wrong result, but it's the right bet. 
Yeah, and, and Bear, we had the hedge there too to take the six and a half with, with Baltimore. I mean, if you're sitting there with 22 to one, you figure you just take Baltimore plus six and a half. Maybe you can hit them both. I don't know. I, I put a little on Baltimore. We talked about last week. Uh, you were here, Bear, but talked a little bit last week that that was a clean hedge because as long as Purdy won that game, Baltimore was, or as long as Purdy won that game, he's probably going to win the MVP. So I don't know, Bear, if you did anything with it, but that was at yeah, least a little bit of very, hedge. Very, 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 very little. I, I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't do enough. I, I just, I'm just kind of sitting there and just dozing out in and out throughout the day and just yeah because I, I mean I had a I had a McCaffrey ticket as well from like way before the year it, as well at like a Tyreek type number so like as long as the 49ers would have won I, I would have been okay but yeah I I did not bet enough on the on the on the Ravens uh, plus plus the uh, the points there it, it, the, the the Josh Allen thing really does interest me because all throughout the year like. Like, like he's the one guy that like people keep mentioning Josh Allen, Josh Allen, Josh Allen, and and, and you're you're right, Sam. Everybody talks about all the turnovers uh, that he's committed this year, and I, I I just don't know. Do do you think if they were to if if they win out, like it, could he get it? Like if the if the Dolphins lose to the Ravens and and the Bills went out and they win the division, like could he get it? I don't know. That's a that's a tough call, Jeff, don't you think? Well, he could certainly win the award because we're absent this year of a of a surefire MVP. It's like that in most years you're like you, you get to week 17, Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady. Like it's very simple. This year it's not. And it could change, by the way, after this weekend. If Tua goes into Baltimore and he plays well, he might be the MVP favorite, right? If Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill is about 360 yards away from 2,000. If he manages to do that against Baltimore and Buffalo in 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 two weeks, he'll win the MVP. Look, McCaffrey to me, I, I know he's number he's number two right now in odds. I don't see him as like the MVP. Quite honestly, I don't I don't watch them play and think like, oh, he's I'm watching the MVP play right now. But obviously, the Niners are the one seed in in that in that conference, and Baltimore, Miami stumble, and Buffalo stumbles, and maybe Christian McCaffrey's the MVP. You, at this point, I feel like you have your wagers and you just sit tight because we don't know what's going to happen because each week it fluctuates. It fluctuates mid game, guys. You, you, you see the yeah. tweets about it. Mid game, Lo, Lo, Lamar and Brock are just flipping in the odds, and so that's why I think right now, if you have wagers, you you just sit tight and you hope it works out for the best. If you have anything, uh, don't have anything, just sit. I would not play anything because you, you don't know what's going to happen each and every. You know if. Dak Prescott, let's say the 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 Cowboys finished with the one seed, not the one seed, but finished winning the NFC East. Are we sure Dak Prescott is out of the conversation totally if he puts up 800 yards in the next two weeks? I, I don't think so. So I, I think all these guys are still in it because there's so much unknown how the season's going to end. I think to answer my my own, own question to myself there, if I had to make a bet right now, I would probably bet Josh Allen. That would probably just, just I think I think at that number and just where he was thought to be at the beginning of the year, and the fact if he would kind of lead this comeback, I, I think that story would uh would gain some momentum. Do I, does that mean I think Allen's going to win it? No, but I think if I did have to bet somebody right now, especially at that number, it would be it would be Josh Allen. So, an, an interesting thing getting back to with, with the involving the Ravens. Is kind of the whole, the whole one seed and these make miss the playoff type of odds. Like if the Ravens win this week against the Dolphins, the number one seed is, is wrapped up. And like if, if you're looking, I haven't examined all of them or, or, or made a bet on this yet, but but I, I think there could be a little argument to to bet the Steelers um, to make the playoffs at like plus four seventy because. Steelers, do you think the Steelers are going to go to Seattle and win? I mean, Seattle certainly feels like they're in a game that it feels like they're the the new Chargers. Every game's coming down to the uh, the, the final two minutes. So if you, if you think uh, Mason Rudolph isn't going to turn into a pumpkin and that uh, Pittsburgh defense is going to play and travel, which normally it does, and they can go to Seattle and win, you think the Ravens beat the Dolphins this week, that means the Ravens have absolutely nothing to play for next week. They can sit everyone, bench everyone, get everybody healthy, uh, for the playoff, and the Steelers can go to uh, can can play Baltimore with with an opportunity to win that game, winning in. So like uh, th that was one of the yes no playoff prices that I thought was worth the play Pittsburgh to make the playoffs at plus four seventy. Was there anything else out there that you guys thought that that might be worth that in that yes no playoff market? And obviously, only two weeks to go, so the opportunities are limited. But anything that you thought might be uh, a little out of whack. 
I hadn't even gone there, man. That's a hell of an angle, though. I mean, it yeah. certainly makes sense to, to think about Pittsburgh. I I didn't study the playoff markets. The only thing I did notice, not to bring this back to Buffalo, but did you see the the price jack on that? They went from minus 200 to make the playoffs to minus 1,300 <laughs> because they win, granted, a squeaker, a letdown spot. They beat the Chargers, but the Bengals, the Colts, and the Texans all lost. It, it literally couldn't have gone any better for Buffalo from minus 200 to minus 1200 in one weekend to make the playoffs. It was, it was a pretty, it was a pretty, pretty unbelievable. Everything is kind of is lined up for them uh, pretty well. And hopefully people out there got on those prices that we were talking about in this chat uh, a couple of weeks ago, with AFC uh, and Super Bowl. Well, yeah, there's one more that's still out there, Bear, Bear uh, a book we have in Connecticut that, could frankly use an intervention. They they have some work to do, but uh, the Bills are plus two eighty to win the East. You talked about it. If the Ravens win this week, we're going to assume the Bills are going to beat the Patriots, and I do think the Bills are going to beat the Patriots. I know they lost them already. That makes me even like them more. You're not going to catch them off guard. So uh, Buffalo beats New England. Baltimore beats Miami. Everyone holds serve. The favorites win. That game is for the division title next week. Baltimore, uh, Buffalo in Miami. That money line is not going to be plus two eighty. That's going to be a one or two point spread. It's going to be a very low spread. Uh, there's plus two sixty fives out there, plus two eighty, plus two seventy. I, I mean, can you talk me out of Buffalo plus two eighty, plus two seventy in that range to win a division? Because I think that that game next week is for a division title. Yeah, it's, it says that that would obviously be contingent on uh, the Ravens beating Miami this week. Yes. Yeah, I, I would think most people would expect that. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff is is this a uh, is this a classic uh, flat spot for the for the Ravens coming off that big win on Monday night? Should we be worried? Should we be worried about well, the Ravens this week? I think I think it's more about the 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 travel. I mean, you you get they get back probably Tuesday morning early a.m. on Baltimore. You it's week seventeen. You got to go to practice on Wednesday. I mean, just re body recovery. I'm not sure emotional. I think emotionally they're fine. I mean, they, they're a veteran team. They've they've won these games before. They played these games before. Like to me, that's not the concern. The concern is just body wise, right? Is having to come back and play a Miami team that's a little fresher. Um, you know that that hasn't you know been able to sleep one more night, rest one more day, and that's my concern with uh, with Baltimore spot. Not not really emotionally, just physically coming back and playing in such a short rest against a Miami team that uh, that it just has a, a little more rest than you guys. I, I don't really worry about them, um, you know, just being ready to play, but just physically, can they make that, that, that bounce back? But look, the Dolphins, I think, showed a lot in this win against the Cowboys because – We've talked a lot about their inability at times to, to play against these quote unquote like physical teams, right? These better teams, these teams with winning records. They won that game against the Cowboys without playing their A game on offense. And I think that's a big component to their confidence heading into the Baltimore game. Like, hey guys, we won without playing our best. Imagine us playing our best against Baltimore in this game. And one other note, uh, it's worth exploring, guys. The Miami defense has been really good since Jalen Ramsey came back. Like, yes. like one of the best in the NFL. And, and we were waiting for the Vic Fangio Dolphins defense to start sort of playing better. And as soon as you get your number one cornerback, shocking, you play a lot better. Yeah, imagine the, that. The, the most points, the, yeah, the 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 most points they allowed was, a, you know, I think 27 to Tennessee. That's a weird game. And 20 to the Cowboys. Otherwise, it's 14 to the Chiefs. It's 17. It's 13. It's it's 15. It's like, this defense, guys, is really good. I think that's a big part of this game for, for the Dolphins to have success is if their defense can slow down the Ravens offense, then this is a ball game. Yeah, I just I look at this game, Miami and Baltimore, and it's fascinating because let's let's just rewind one week. You know, nobody really wanted to bet Baltimore. I mean, I'm generalizing here, but for the most part, it was a San Francisco party. I mean, that line got bet from four to four and a half all the way up to six and a half. Everybody bet San Francisco. The Sharps laid it early. The public piled on late. And now Baltimore beats San Francisco. And now you can get three with Miami. And, and let's also discuss this. The three best coaches the last two years, ATS, are Dan Campbell, Brian Dable, and Mike McDaniel. McDaniel, 20 and 13. Not the largest sample size in the world, but this will be a spot, I promise you, where you're going to see a lot more support coming into the game on Baltimore. Nobody wanted to bet Baltimore last week, but now Lamar's the MVP, and I only got to lay three, and it's just... I'm not a big teaser player, but, Will, you could tease this up to nine on Miami. Um, you know, go through the 
the four and the seven and even the eight, which is a lot more valuable in 2023 because coaches are going for two all the time. Right. I just I'm very cautious of this Baltimore layup that that is being thrown out there. That Baltimore is just such a a good bet here, and I think these two teams are are very close, very close. The thing that would keep me off of Miami, I still think Tua has some flaws. One, playing in the cold, and it's not going to be crazy cold. It's going to be in the 40s here, but in pressure. I, I just don't think he's athletic enough to escape the rush. I think he just, if you throw them off their game, it's a little, they've been compared to a lot to the uh, the greatest show on turf, Rams, where if you just throw them the rhythm off like the Patriots did in that Super Bowl 20-something years ago, they're just not the same team. I feel like Baltimore with that aggressive defense, I just... I know it's a, a not a good spot for Baltimore on the short week. I just think it's a, a tough matchup uh, for, for the Dolphins here. Very regret. I mean, they were flying all over the place on Monday night. That was, you know, it, it looked like they just, not that they knew it was coming, but man, it was, everything is short and underneath with the 49ers. They don't have that deep ball to sometimes keep you honest. And, and the Ravens were just teeing off and ready for everything. I mean, that game showed you limitations of Brock Purdy, right? I mean, everyone's sort of been saying this is sort of the 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 where Brock Purdy is at, and that game showed where Brock Purdy is at. The Niners get behind guys. They can't throw themselves back into games. Like, that's a limitation for the Niners. If they get behind in a playoff game, Kyle Shanahan is 0-38 now, trailing eight-plus you know, eight plus points in the fourth quarter. Now, to be fair, teams win that 7% of the time since, since 2017, but he's won zero of them. Like, he, this team is not built to come back in games when they're down multiple scores, and the Ravens' defense was suffocating. Their, their hands were up, obviously. They, they got after pretty I mean, You saw the flaws of the Niners, but the Ravens might be one of the only teams that can get that out of quarterbacks. And you're right about Tua. If you get pressure in his face, you force him to hold the ball a tad longer than he wants to, then you end up forcing him into mistakes. And that, that certainly has to be the Ravens' game plan. I'm surprised you said that because I'm a little more worried about the 49ers' offensive line than I am about Purdy. I think Purdy will be fine. I the thing with Purdy, I worry about he's he's small and he seems prone to these injuries. He's got a stinger two weeks ago, got a stinger last week. Remember, he got hurt in that that Philly NFC title game. I work that 49ers offensive line, especially if Trent Williams is going to be banged up or he's not going to be there. There's some flaws there yeah. in that offensive line for the 49ers. They're not great. Yeah, they, they, there are. And I think we we were all, I was we were all talking at halftime like they can run the ball. It, it will, you would think, in the second half, and then that never materialize you mentioned the, the greatest show on turf and certainly this year's Rams not the greatest show on turf but that offense has been really good and now they're uh, five and a half point favorite at the Giants I would think the Giants are going to be going back to Tyrod Taylor full time uh, this week now I would think the, the time uh, the Tommy DeVito story is probably over but like if you look at the the, the NFC potential playoff matchups like the Rams are going to be a problem for someone in that first round. And Will, I think that it doesn't line up right now where potentially it would be uh, Matthew Stafford going to Detroit for the Lions uh, to take on the Lions in a, in a Detroit Lions home game. That in that what would I guess it would be a three six kind of game. And poor Detroit, the Lions, they haven't hosted a playoff game in 30-something years. That would be a weird dynamic. You finally host a playoff game, you're all excited, and then your old quarterback, Stafford, comes into a town with a pretty good team around him, a team that's playing with house money, a good coach in McVay. Yeah, I agree. I worry about them this week. I wouldn't lay the points. I feel like they're starting to uh, to get their flowers a little too much, where they're everybody's sleeper, there's every, they're everybody's darling. Taylor's obviously a huge upgrade, an upgrade over DeVito. I don't know, a huge upgrade, but he's an upgrade over DeVito. Taylor's a solid NFL quarterback. I think we're about 16 or 17 minutes into DeVito's 15 minutes of fame. So I'd be careful <laughs> about laying the five and a half this week. Yeah, Just it's win. coming down too. I mean, on Monday, we were yeah. talking about a line that was six at a lot of places. And I actually wrote about this. We do that talk the line on Fox and, you know, Jeff and J-Mac and I basically predict where the lines are going to go. And I said, look, we're looking at potentially 40 degrees and windy in New Jersey on Sunday. And, you know, a lot of people don't really care about the weather, but when you have a passing attack like the Rams have, it's all it's all pass, right? I mean, they can run it with Kyron Williams, but yeah. the Rams butter their bread with passing, with Cooper Cup and Nakua and Higby. And, and if the elements don't support passing attacks, you're going to see wise guys come the other way. And we've already seen that. I mean, Circa is down to four and a half. Uh, some books are at five. There are five and a halves. The Giants clearly are more efficient with Terod Taylor instead of Tommy Cutlets, and that's finally over, and we can move on with our lives. But, I mean, look at the way this market is moving. I mean, from six down to four and a half at one of the sharpest books in the world, and I'll tell you what, it's probably not done running. I mean, you're going to see a lot of those five and a halves disappear, and if we if we wake up Sunday and, like, current forecast says, like, 12-mile-an-hour winds at MetLife, if it's up to 18, 19, 
it's going to affect what the Rams want to do. And, and that has to be accounted for in the NFL. We look elsewhere around the league, the team that the Giants nearly upset last week, the Eagles. Like, I have no interest in laying 10 and a half points with the Eagles. Total's 48. Like, doesn't this, doesn't this seem like a like a 38-28 type of game? The Eagles aren't stopping anybody. And at the same time, Arizona's certainly not going to stop them, right? I mean, I, I, again, I haven't looked at the, uh, the weather, Sammy, for, uh, for Philadelphia on, on Sunday, but I would assume it might be a little bit – uh, windy as well, but I don't think that would affect either of these offenses uh, as much because of their uh, Eagles' ability to run the ball. But like 48 seems kind of low as a total, doesn't it? Yeah, the Cardinals moved the ball. I mean, we know that they moved it against Chicago. They just couldn't convert some of those, you know, drives into touchdowns. But we did, we also saw Arizona two weeks ago have almost 450 yards of offense on San Francisco. So. Uh, they can definitely move it. Uh, I do, as you know, Bear, I have all my weather tabs up. Uh, it's 45, wind about 15 in Philly. So take from that what you must. I mean, it's not like crazy wind, but it's definitely not four miles an hour. I just, I, I want to applaud the Cardinals for actually doing what they're supposed to do. Because this is a team that, <laughs> you know, they just keep winning games they're not supposed to win, and they they did it right. They lost a close one to Chicago. Uh, they are now in line for the two in the draft. So Chicago's going to pick one, thanks to Carolina trading the pick, and then Arizona two, Washington three, New England four. If Arizona has any idea what to do, they would just lay down and die in this spot. I know that players don't want to do that, but, like, you guys aren't winning anything. There, there's literally no – I'm going to say this for the third time this season about Arizona. There is no point to win this game. Absolutely none. You could pick a generational talent that will flip the direction of your franchise. And you want to go into Philly and try and win to get what? The sixth pick now? If you do that, you're organizationally stupid. Period. And yeah, next what? week, they, next week they could get a, a Seattle team at home uh, in Phoenix that needs the game for a wild card. So, well, it looks like our, our Cardinals under three and a half where we're, we're where we the 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 heart monitor is uh, looking like it's getting a little a little steadier. It looks like we 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 might be in a position, if nothing else, to kind of figure out what we want to do next week. Because I I can't see them winning this week. But again, they, they they're kind of it's kind of like the old like make make it look good with the old wink. Like you get you, you know you're not going to win, but just kind of go out there and, and give a good effort. Kind of feels like we're going to get that this week, and then uh, next week hosting the uh, the Seahawks will be for all the marbles, right? Yeah, and I got under four and a half, too. So uh, just keep losing. Just keep losing. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with Eagles Cardinals, Gannon, the, the coach for the Cardinals, has been on, was on the Eagles staff for a long time. So maybe there's some familiarity there. I think that helps Arizona, if everything, if anything. Uh, if you're Arizona, though, it's Sammy so right. You got the number two pick. Carolina's flirted with some wins. They were close with the Packers. Who knows about Lawrence this week? Carolina versus Jacksonville. Uh, Carolina plays Tampa next week. Maybe Tampa doesn't need the game. It's not impossible. Carolina wins another game, and then um, that would put them at three, put Arizona at three. Then it would come down to tiebreakers. I don't know the uh, the number one pick tiebreaker, so they're still not out of the mix for worst record number one pick. And you don't have to tank. You don't have to get all 53 guys to tank. You need one guy to sit. You need to Mr. Murray to have a seat on the bench. Clayton yeah. Toon, step right up, and that takes care of, that takes care of everything. Clayton Toon music. I, I, yes. I, I, I mean, I, look, I, I think in week 18, they can certainly do that. Like, I if, if they get blown up by the Eagles, just say, hey, look, Kyler Murray, thanks for playing this year. You know, yeah, we uh, saw you. Just take you're a back. seat. You know, I mean, yeah, like you're back, you're healthy. I, I like the Eagles over 29 and a half points in this game. Arizona's 32nd on uh, DVOA defense. They allow, uh, I have it right here, uh, 26.9 points per game. We saw the Eagles sort of get right offensively last week, even with a, a weird interception. I think the Eagles scored a bunch of points in this game. Um, and look, we've had one team already. I mean, the Broncos just told Russell Wilson to take a hike. I mean, Arizona could be in the same situation next week and say, hey, man, look, Kyler Murray, we're getting rid of you after the season. We're not playing you in week 18. We're trying to lose. We're trying to draft a quarterback in the future future uh we're gonna sit you so the cardinals could certainly be in that situation after this game two prong question here two two points number one that might trigger me betting just whatever they whatever they post early i don't know when they're gonna post it because obviously they'll probably be a little a little gun shy a little hesitant in posting these prices on some of these games for these particular reasons but yeah 
I might bet Seattle at the open because if you assume Arizona is going to lose and like, like, well, what do you think Seattle would open what in, in Arizona, Sammy? Three, what, what, three what, and a half, what, maybe. Yeah. Like, and if it, and that's assuming Kyler Murray, if that's Clayton Toon, that's what seven, at least. Yeah, sure. probably. I mean, maybe not a full seven, but six and a half. I mean, because somebody will take seven, I, I would think, because Seattle's not seven points better than a lot of teams on the road, you know, um, it's in Arizona. You said, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, seven's probably the ceiling. Um, seven and a half would disappear. Hell I'd take seven and a half. Not that I'm the wisest guy in the world, but I, that's a lot of points, uh, to get against a, a Seattle team. That's just mid, um, they're, they're average. I mean, it's an average football team. So yeah, probably six and a half. That's probably if, if, if it was tuned against, uh, Seattle's ones, I would say six and a half. Yeah, and I, they, I don't. I don't think there is a scenario where it wouldn't be Seattle's one because I think they're going to need next. I think they need both of these games, right? I don't think. I don't know if there is a scenario where they can clinch this week or not. And then you mentioned uh, Jeff. You mentioned the Russell Wilson thing, and this is something that Will was kicking around uh, with us. And and what, what like what would you make a price that Russell Wilson is starting week one for an NFL team next year, b- 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 given the, the salary cap situation, what what he's going to make, and just kind of where the quarterback landscape is in the league right now. Like, like what, what team, I, I think Will, Will, I think you said it best, like what team would be excited right. about having Russell Wilson as their, their week one, 2024 and NFL starting quarterback. I think yes is a favorite just because, Hey, it's musical chairs. And there's, we see the quarterbacks there's it, the quarterback play is so down. There's 32 chairs open. You need 32 butts for the seats at some point. So he probably be a favorite. I don't, is the money a factor once they cut him, which I'm assuming they're going to do, he can just sign for whatever. So it's not like you're going to yeah. owe him the money Denver owed him. I would say yes is like minus 180. You kicked around the Falcons, the Raiders. The problem is, like you said, you're going to have to sell this to a fan base. Like, all right, Russell Wilson's our guy. Sean Payton came in to fix him. He was, he lost the weight this year. This was supposed to be the revitalization and he played okay. I just don't know how you sell him to your fan base. All right, you know, week one, we're all excited. We're ready to go. Russell Wilson's our guy. That's a tough sell. That being said, all it takes is one team. I I, I don't know. Is is he starting somewhere next week? Uh, Sammy, is he starting week one somewhere? How about Russell Wilson goes to Foxborough with Belichick? Oh boy. I don't, <laughs> oh boy. No, no, no. That, that, you, you know, hey, listen, you know, Belichick has locked himself into his office with the curtains closed, watching Wilson film. He's like, all right, if I get Russ, then I take Marvin Harrison, and maybe I can milk this a little bit longer. Like you know, that's that's in that cage right now in New England. Uh, but aren't him and Sean Payne boys? He's gonna, he's, he's gonna call Sean Payne, and yeah. Sean Payne's gonna be like, "Yeah, man, we can only run ten plays with Russell Wilson. Um, it's not gonna work." And I wouldn't give. Him. Look, I, I think Atlanta's a fun option, right? Because. They just need something better at quarterback. And Russell Wilson yeah. is something better than what they have at quarterback right now. And if they if they do not go and get themselves uh, a rookie this season and Arthur Smith keeps his job, I could see him saying, look, man, we'll take Russell Wilson. He's better than what we have. We, we don't really have a big offensive playbook in the passing game. We don't need him to, to run a, a Sean Payne offense. Just come in here. Don't turn the ball over. Don't make Desmond Ritter mistakes. And, let, and you know, let's run the football. We have a decent offensive line. They struggle pass protecting, but we have – uh, uh, Bijan, we have uh, Pitts, we have London, like you have weapons to throw to and let's just get ourselves a veteran quarterback in and sort of save our jobs if you're Arthur Smith. And, you know, the money thing, Will, is 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 absolutely true, right? If they cut him or trade him, a uh, bulk of that money will be on the Broncos' books, not on the Falcons' books. And look, if they do trade him, I absolutely believe that the new team will ask him to restructure his deal, which I think he will agree to. He should not agree to what the Broncos asked him to do, which is basically, hey, buddy, can you restructure your deal so we can cut you? Which is absolutely ludicrous. Any <laughs> uh, organization would, would ask him, like they, they, that's what they ask him to do. They're like, hey man, can you take your injury, basically your injury part of your contract away, revoke that so we can cut you. So it'd be easier to cut you after the season. <laughs> that's a ridiculous thing that a team asked a player. Um, and of course he said, no, as he should, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on his side here. So um, I think he's somewhere started because as you mentioned, Will, He's better than a lot of options team have. And if he's willing to take less money, which I think he knows that this career he's going to have to do, then he will be starting next season somewhere. Can I can I interest anybody in lane three and a half with the Broncos against the Chargers this week? No. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> no. That was that, that was the that was the uh, the quickest uh 
quickest novellas or novels since O.J. Search for the True Killer right there. No, no, and no. And that's a <laughs> make, 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 that, make that four no's right there. You've been holding that one all season, haven't you, Barry? Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, yeah, I've been, I've been I, my brand returned from shoulder surgery. Maybe yeah, you get the, a couple uh, weeks off. You come back with some gems. I see. I, I know the writers have been doing well in your household. Exactly. Exactly. I got one. I got one good hand I can write with. I, I, I get, can't really type well, but like I, I can use the old penmanship, like pen and paper again. Uh, maybe we mentioned San Francisco, Washington earlier. I mean, that 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 seems like a like like total. I mean the red the, the the commanders stink. I mean somehow they nearly pulled that game off against the Jets, but I don't know. I mean you, you would expect the 49ers to put up a bunch of points in DC this week, but I don't know if we want to lay 12 and a half, 13 here. And any of you guys want feel like laying? I mean maybe the San Francisco team total may be the way to go here. They're too banged up to lay that many points, but I don't want to step in front of an angry San Francisco team coming off a loss. That's a pretty easy pass for me. Yeah, if Washington can move the ball, they're going to score some points. I mean, clearly Howell's, Howell's a threat to get them down the field. The question is, you know, how healthy is San Francisco going to be? And it's a pass for me. There's a lot of games this week that I just I have no interest in. Um, it, it's one of those spots where, like, you could see San Francisco win 35-7 to if it really wanted to or needed to. I don't know. I mean, these these big spreads late in season when you got guys trying to stay healthy for the playoffs, it's just it's not something that I want to do. I would lay it before I took the points, that's for sure, but I probably won't get involved. If the NFC representative in the Super Bowl is not San Francisco, who will it be? I'd say Dallas Philly. just to be different. I'll Philly? say Dallas. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if it's Philly. Philly's got the home it. game. It's a t- tough path for, for Dallas, but yeah. Toss it between those two. Lions, I, 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 Dallas the, would have been my choice, I think. Look, if the Lions win this weekend against Dallas and the Niners lose one more game, the Lions are the one seed, guys. Like they have inside track here because the strength of I think the strength of win to to be a, ahead of Philly again. If, if Detroit wins out, I, th- I think that's right. It's the Cowboys this week, the Minnesota at home. Uh, if I'm correct on that, the Niners have the Commanders and then believe the Rams in Week 18. The Rams will be playing that's for fun. something in that game, and the Rams Baby. always play the Niners close. The Lions are the one seed. If the Lions are at home, they need home field advantage more than any team in the NFL, by far. They're so much better at home than on the road, than outside. If they're the one seed, I don't think they're going to get to Super Bowl. I think the Niners will be tough out, but that that makes them live. because I, Again, you get one less game to play. You're at home. You're in your own place. You're in your own elements. No, no Jared Goff outside in cold weather. It's interesting to consider the Lions in that spot if they get the one seed. I don't know. That doesn't really scare me. I mean, the Bears should have won there. The Packers won there. Seattle won there earlier. I, 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 I get it from the whole, you don't have to worry about Jared Goff outside, but how bad that defense is, that, that would not that that would not concern me at all if, if I were San Francisco or Dallas or someone and had to go to Detroit and potentially play the Lions. I, I don't know what you, what Sammy, you and, uh, and what is Dallas? Why is Dallas an answer here? They don't win any of these games ever. Like why, what, what, what confidence do you have in they Dallas being well another team? For the NF- that was a really good they lost game. Again, they very, though. I mean, they very easily could have won the game. They very, very but they did. They had an opportunity won. defensively. They very easily could have sure. won in Philly a couple of weeks ago. I, I think that narrative is getting a little, they, a little tiresome. Oh, they can't beat anybody. Like, I mean, it's like a couple of games where just one play here or there. Like, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm like higher on Dallas now than I was earlier. Because earlier in the year, I was kind of but the same thing. Oh, they're bullies. They can't beat anybody, anybody good. But that was a really good game last week. They very easily could have won the game in Philly. They very easily could have won. So I'm, I'm a little higher, I think, on Dallas than you are. But Bear, for 25 years, we've said this. They're one play away. They're one this and that away. They're close to winning this game. They're close to winning that game. Oh, they, oh, they're one second away from spiking the football and that quarterback sneak. Like they're always one second away from everything. And they continually fail in those moments. So I look, I agree with you guys. They're a very talented football team. If they were in the Super Bowl, I'd be like, yep, yeah, good talented football team in the Super Bowl. The problem is they've sh- they have not shown the ability. Are we certain they're going to go to Tampa Bay? And beat Tampa Bay in Wild Card Weekend. No, if Baker Mayfield's playing anywhere close to the level he's playing right now, so I just don't, I don't really think Dallas is a team I trust ever in these situations. Uh, I trust them more than Detroit, though. I mean, Detroit's yeah. failed since 1968 or something like that. So I mean, oh, whatever. No, no, I'm not saying Detroit is the one you bet on. I'm just saying if they have the one seed. They're an interesting option in the NFC. 
well, yeah. the question Let's talk was, about that game too, that, that Saturday game. I mean, that's the highest total by, well, yes. not by a long shot because San Francisco is at 50, but 53 and a half in what I am calling the Mensa Bowl between two geniuses, McCarthy and Campbell. Uh, <laughs> that's probably, I mean, it's a high total, guys, but I mean, is, is anybody bold enough to bet under 50 in that or 53, 53 and a half in that one? I mean, those, those like two teams could, could just blow that scoreboard up. I like the over Dallas gets their 35 plus at home against anybody. Detroit doesn't have the secondary to hold up against those receivers. I think Detroit will probably get their points too, especially, you know, if they fall behind and they're playing catch up to me, that's a 34 24 type of game. I, I like the over there. You, you mentioned that you mentioned, are we sure Dallas is going to go to uh, Tampa and win? Are we, are we sure Tampa is going to beat New Orleans this week? No. No, I I think we're under the three now. I, three was a, yep, intriguing with a, yeah. The three was intriguing to to me. It's two fairly equal teams. You just take the points, man. I that would mean betting on the Saints. So I hate this Saints team. <laughs> I hate the coach. I hate the quarterback. They're just man. They are painful. That's a team that needs a total makeover. They were that was tough to watch last Thursday night. That was such a fake one score game and. They're they're sort of in no man's land too because they're not good enough to compete. They're they're in cap hell. They're a veteran team, man. That's that's one team, man. That that's a total. They, they need a total uh, makeover. In, in New Worst possible place to be in the NFL. Yes. Is where every, everything everything sucks about the New Orleans Saints except for the city. City's awesome. Great. That's another great one. Is Carr a quarterback remember, guys. next year? Does Carr start somewhere yes. next year? That's another one. That's like cool. you know. That's I mean you're gonna have to fill 32 of these jobs. It's really tough. Just remember, for years, guys, Saints fans told us that they were better at the salary cap than everyone else in the NFL, and it was in, and they knew better than everyone else. The cap, it, it, it doesn't matter. There's no salary cap. It never matters. It seems to matter. You have less talented football players because you can't, you can't pay all of them. So, um, I don't trust Derek Carr on the road. I don't know if I trust Tampa Bay, but Derek Carr on the road, like needing to win, they need to win this game to continue to to keep pace. Um, Tampa wins this game. They're one game away from from winning the South. I, I don't trust New Orleans at all in this game. Do we trust Kansas City to beat Jake Browning? Oh boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No. What I mean, the hell was that? What the hell okay, was that? Okay. You, you explain. Uh, okay. I'll explain what's going on with Kansas City. Here's the problem. When you have a good quarterback, back home is a still good guy. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm making my Brian um, Gumble glasses and, and, here. And, and, I'm making my Brian Gumble glasses and you, here and kind of yeah. kind of listening here. Thank you. Here, get, get all good yeah. listen. No. <laughs> Here, here, no, here's what happens. Um, when you have a bad offense like the Chiefs do with a good quarterback, the, the issue becomes it, that it's not just one thing, right? Because if it's one thing, they'd scheme out of it. Oh, your tackle's bad? Okay, let's help your tackle. Oh, you have a, a two-wide receiver that isn't very good? Like last season. Okay, Juju, Travis Kelsey, Jeremy McKinnon. Those are our guys, right? The problem is the Chiefs have a different guy who screws up on every play. So let's say the protection is good, which, which, which it was for parts of the Raiders game, and then no one's open. Protection is good. The wide receivers who have zero awareness, they have no awareness. It's got to be bottom third in the NFL in wide receiver awareness. They don't know where to run in, in you know, how, how to stop in the zone defense. And then all of a sudden, the right tackle gets beat on, on, on a play. Mahomes can't connect with someone. Our protection's good. Mahomes has the ball sail. Uh, they call a terrible play call like that, whatever trick play they ran. Like they, it, every play that they screw up is something different. So you can never get your way out of it. You, you can't scheme around. MVS had 61 snaps, I believe, had one target. Mahomes is not even throwing to the guy anymore. Like, they are a complete <laughs> mess right now on offense. And there's just no fix. There's no easy fix. It's not going to get better. I mean, the, the one thing I'd say is, okay, you know, Patrick, just take what's there, right? That, that doesn't mean check down. But just, if MVS is open, just throw the ball to him. I mean, like, you, you, you try something different. And Travis Kelsey's being doubled. They can't beat man coverage, so no one's worried about the ball going deep. It, it's a complete mess right now in offense there's no there's no fix it's not gonna get any better and the Bengals guys over the the, the, the last couple of years they played them really well in defense they, they've stymied them they've been the one defense that Mahomes at times cannot figure out and now you have a Chiefs offense that is not playing very well I don't think Kansas City scores many points in this game I've never said that before I, I don't think they're going to score in the 20s in this game Maybe a Mahomes rushing prop over because I think he got it, you could see see the light go on for Mahomes midway through that Raider game where he's like, man, nobody's open. I'm just gonna have to run. And then he started to really run and I think he got into the 50s for rushing yards. So that prop is usually, I don't know if it's up yet, but it's usually in like the 20s or so. I could see Mahomes just saying, you know what, we need this game to win the division. Let's get back on track. I could see Mahomes running a little more. 
I don't know what you guys see. Jeff, you, you probably got a better eye for this having played. Is Kelsey just not the same player? I know you say oh, he's getting double teamed. He was getting double teamed last yeah. year. I just, he's older than people think. I mean, think about it. I think he's older yeah. than Gronkowski. Gronkowski retired twice already. Um, and he's, he's had injuries. I, I don't know. Is Kelsey yeah. just not the same player anymore? He's, he's not. He's 34 years old. Um, and remember, he entered the season hurt, so he, he didn't come in the season healthy. Remember, he missed week one. If you come in the season healthy, I think he's a little bit better at this point. But there's other times this year where he's limped off the field with an ankle, his knee obviously in week one, like he's getting older, and he's not able to, to win in man coverage quite quite the same way he, he was in, in years past. He, I, I think when you watch the film, too, you know, he's not finding those areas in the zone on those scramble drills quite as well as he has in the past. Um, so, yeah, he's just taking a step back, which is expected, but then you would hope that someone else would pick up the slack, and they have no one under them. Rasheed Rice is good. He's, I think he's got 90 targets this year, the most a, a Chiefs rookie's ever had. Um, and he will continue to get better, but he's still not good enough to rely on him in big moments. There's no one outside of Kelsey, and teams are just saying, hey, you know what? We're going to double Travis. So it, it's a whole mess right now. Jeremy McKinnon being an IR really hurts them in the past game as well. He was a big part of what they did last season. He had 71 targets last year out of the backfield. So they're just missing pieces and not playing very well right now. All of that said, like I understand all of that, and, and clearly Kansas City has more flaws than they've ever had in the Mahomes era. That's All of that is true. This is maybe one of the better buy low spots on Kansas City that I can remember. I mean, they've lost, what, three of their last five games that they haven't been covering. I want to say they're one, four, and one against the number last six. So what that does is it it brings the price down on Kansas City. And I, I'm sorry, Kansas City on a neutral against a backup quarterback like Jake Browning, I have eight points better on a neutral. This game is uh, is in Arrowhead. So I, I I have it ten, um, not that you know my numbers are the uh, the greatest thing in the world, but I mean like this is, you know, if Kansas City's playing well, this line is nine, nine and a half, ten, ten and a half, and and because they're not, we get to lay the fattest number in football, a flat seven, and and that to me I, I know it's not going to be popular, but I, I I'm probably going to lay seven. Like I I have my five that I have to put in a contest every week, and Kansas City is one of the five I'm going to use no matter what. I'm just trying to figure out if I'm going to lay seven with my own money, and I'm I'm honestly like the closer we get to the weekend, I'm probably going to have minus seven in my pocket. Jeff, did you create a new pro football focus category there with wide receiver awareness? Is that going to be something that we're going to see in there in their splits? I hope so. Next year? Yeah, the Chiefs would be like thirtieth right now. It's not very good. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, uh, I hope they take my advice on that one. It's just, it's, guys. I mean, MVS like just, it's, I don't know, it's bad. It's just not good. No one knows where to go. It's sad to watch Mahomes run, run around and the wide receivers just like run in circles. No idea what they're doing. It's awful. We expect CJ Stroud back for the uh, Texas this week. I see varying all over the place. I see anything from four and a half to five and a half here. Uh, I do I, I think we expect Levis back as well, right? So uh, Texans need need the win for the uh, to keep their play hopes alive. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to lay that number with with the uh, with the Texans though, especially just given they have all those wide receiver problems still. Yeah, maybe. How about an over here? Texans, if they get Shroud back, they can move the ball and score. They're not good on defense. Um, I, I, are we sure Levis is playing? I'd actually still prefer Tannehill. I know Tannehill's not a great I'll player, probably. but. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not involved. I'm not getting involved in terms of the spread. If, if anything, I'd take the dog. Rabel as a dog is still a pretty good way to go. If you got the three and a half last week, you covered. So it, it'd be dog or pass. Maybe, maybe look at an over, but um, th this is not one. I mean, who knows if Stroud, if he comes back, if he's going to be 100%. I mean, it, right. a, a concussion serious enough to keep him out for a few weeks. Maybe he's a little foggy. I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't lay it here, though. Jeff Sky Rabel getting five and a half. I know it's not a home game, so it's not as... It's not as oh, ripe, no. but this is that old Chris Andrews line. If, if you must win, you might not be that good, you know, like, and that there's a lot to be said about Houston in this spot. Like, yeah, it's a good team. They've certainly overachieved, but now that they're on the outside looking into the playoff picture, people are going to bet them and the public is going to pile on when we get closer to the weekend because, oh, the Texans need this game. And that stuff is, is all sort of right. built into the line. I mean, five and a half at Circa, like that's, that's going to tell us that people are going to probably pile on Houston. You know, it's just, it's, it's the way it goes. 
we're going to get to Saturday, Sunday, and people are going to look at the Texans and they're going to put them in teasers and they're going to put them in parlays and money line parlays and all that. And I, I just, I don't think it's that easy when the pressure finally starts to, to percolate. And now Houston is in a, a spot that it's not been in in a long time. Like we are decent enough to go to the playoffs, but we have to win this game against a division rival. And this game is going to be a war. It's going to be a freaking war. Speaking of pressure, uh, are the uh, the Jaguars going to be a um, teaser leg for everybody this week? They Six and a half. I can't trust that team at all. No. Zero. No, the Panthers are playing slightly better. I mean, look, Joe Barry yeah. is uh, is often uh, you know the the elixir for any bad offense, but I mean they're playing slightly better. They're, they're like each week you maybe see a little bit of improvement with Bryce Young. Um, I'm not sure it's enough for, but Jacksonville's lost four in a row, guys, and they're not playing terribly well in any of the four games. I this is just a no a pass for me in this game, absolutely. Yeah, it'd be take the points or anything. I don't know if there's certainty now if Lawrence is playing. If he is playing, like, all right, he's going to play through an injury. That didn't look too good last week when he's playing through an injury. So maybe you'd rather have Beathard as long as he's healthy and you can just game plan around him. But no, it'd be take the points or, or, or nothing. I'm, this would be an obvious teaser leg with the Jags at six and a half, seven off all these losses. I can't, I, I just, I can't stomach it. I can't do it. Looking at, I think I think we kind of hit on every uh <clears throat> oh, but we, have, we have not hit on uh, the home of the bartender, the Chicago Bears. He bet on his favorite team last week, Sammy. <laughs> it came through for him. Are they, was that the only game that he won last week? He went one and three. Yes. He killed six guys in Circus Survivor <laughs> on the Broncos, only to follow that up by anointing the San Francisco 49ers as a lock on Christmas. And it was not a lock. Um, Big old pile of coal. As we mentioned on the college episode, he's on Cleveland. Um, so we'll already know that result by the time we listen to this. I have not heard anything else, though. He's just buying the uh, the Joe Flacco stock right now. But it's, you know, we got time. We got time for him to get in the lab and cook something up for the weekend. <laughs> actually getting Atlanta plus the three here. I think... Uh, to me, we've talked about this a lot this year. The the loyalty to Ritter has been one of the stranger, more perplexing things I can mm -hmm. ever remember. Heineke's no great quarterback, but he's at least serviceable. And the rest of the team's not bad. They're not th that's a pretty good defense. They've got you know Pitts and Robinson. They got skill players you like. I cannot understand what the hell that was with Ritter uh, all season. To me, Heineke gives him a shot, and this is a pretty much a toss up game. I'll take the three in the game. I, I think is pretty much a coin toss. Yeah, I bet three two on Monday, Bear. Yeah. I took three with the Falcons. They're erratic enough to win or lose any of these close yeah. games. Mm -hmm. So when you can get a full field goal, I yeah. think that's the play here. And also Atlanta very good against the run. Like a lot better than people realize against the run. And that's what the Bears want to do. The Bears want to run first and then open everything up. But Atlanta very stout against the run. And I and I guess they they're not fully dead yet in the playoff race. I mean, I think they need some help. Obviously, they need they need Tampa to lose. And Tampa has obviously the game this week uh, at home. Yeah, if, if, Tampa, if Tampa loses this, if Tampa loses this week and they the Atlanta beats Tampa in Week 18, I think it's Atlanta's division. I think if, Tampa if needs to lose both, Tampa don't they? I think Tampa needs to lose. Yeah, they have Tampa's to lose both. Yeah, yeah. Which they could. I mean, the game, the game in Tampa, the first time it was a field goal game, and sure, very easily could have gone. I mean, Tampa's yeah. not good enough to just walk out onto the field and and, right. and beat anybody. So, who the heck knows? But Anything we didn't, I mean, I, I think we just kind of went through every game now and got got a little something and everything. But is there anything uh, that that we didn't mention that you guys are uh, thinking about? Just quickly, I think Buffalo kills New England. Uh, when, when you're laying a bunch of points, you worry: are they focused? Are they motivated? McDermott has everything he needs to get his attention team, he, or his team's attention. He almost lost as a big favorite last Saturday night. They lost to the Patriots already, so he can sell the team. Hey, you guys can lose. You got everyone's, you know, putting you guys in the playoffs, thinking you're a sleeper of the Super Bowl. You guys can absolutely lose this Patriots team. They've beaten you before. You almost lost last week, so I think he can get his team's attention. And I think they look. New England's played a little better, but New England has really struggled against Buffalo uh, ever since that wind game, that fluky Monday night game. Buffalo has really just done a number <laughs> on New England. I, I could see Buffalo winning this game by you know 17, 20 points. I, I actually like Buffalo minus the number here. And we we appreciate you for that. I I, I can, I, I can see that happening too. I mean, I think everyone might be a little, a lot. No, New England came. 
blew that game nearly up big, nearly blew, could have won in Denver, and now they are kind of on the right track. But yeah, I, I kind of think that might be a uh, a good opportunity to uh, to get it on the Bills. Kind of, I'm kind of with you there. Uh, well, so all right. Until next week. Hopefully, the bunch of uh, winners buried in there, and hopefully, we'll have a successful season. Hopefully, maybe we can get a, a Joe Flacco comeback player of the year ticket. Um, we'll see how that game went last night. Obviously, we're uh, releasing this on Friday, and the Browns Jets game was on Thursday. So may- maybe we'll have a so maybe we'll have two nice little uh, big tickets uh, within a week. We'll have a Flacco. Uh, the, Jet- the Jets will kill my uh, Flacco hundred or Flacco hundred to one there. Will and, uh, and and the party MVP would have gone by uh, the week before. So hopefully, we can keep one of those big tickets alive. So appreciate you guys. Have a great week and good luck. So it's funny we talked, we joked about the bartender just kneecapping people in Survivor and us with our Brock Purdy bets. But kidding aside, now we're down to four people in that Circus Survivor contest and uh, nine point seven million dollars on the line. And I'm sure there are other Survivor pools out there that uh, you listeners are involved in that clearly are nine point seven million, but. Uh, you're getting down to some pretty uh, some serious money and some serious decisions, and you might have to be making decisions as to like, will, will I be using the the, the Chicago Boy Bears or the uh, Houston Texans this week uh, in Survivor? With I mean that, that that's a decision. Like I, I could you imagine just sitting there, Jeff? Like yeah, I got almost ten million dollars on the line, and and you got to pick a team like the Bears or the Texans or or the Broncos. Who, who who was the uh, the culprit this piece past week knocking out six people? Nope. Like, that's just a situation like like it, 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 the the amount of stress and pressure. I mean, I would be going crazy right now. Yeah, I mean, imagine betting on Russell Wilson to win nine million dollars. Couldn't be me. Um, uh, obviously, I wouldn't ever probably get to this point if I was doing Survivor. Um, I uh, I think you if you the options are Bears. Or or Texas, I think if Stroud's playing, you take Houston, right, at home um, in that spot. I got the Titans team that's not playing for anything. The Falcons are on the road. They're playing for something, right? Like, I think you just take Houston here, yeah. Bear, if, 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 that's the, if those are the two options. Yeah, and again, I'm not throwing out the obvious teams because at this point in the year, you're alive. You have, you, you've exhausted the good teams. So I'm assuming that, the teams of the the choices are going to be this week. Uh, maybe some people have the Bears available. Maybe some people have the Texans available. Maybe some people have the Colts available. Maybe some people have Seattle available. Maybe some people still have Denver available. I, like I would think those teams would be the ones that that you're going to get. The the four remaining players will be choosing from those five, those five teams. But it, the other thing that I want to bring up too, is just how everyone out there just says, Oh, let's chop it. And nine million take 2.3 and everybody's happy and go home. And like, it's not as easy as that. I mean, you, it's not just like it's Jeff Schwartz's entry or Chris Felica's entry or Sammy P's entry or Will's entry. Like, there could be like four or five people involved. And I mean, the entries are a thousand dollars a pop. So, I mean, you're talking about like groups of people getting together and pooling money for, for numerous entries. So like if it's like a 2.3 million uh, a pop and there and there are four people, okay, so you're each going to get 500 K, which is still a healthy amount of money, but maybe you've hedged along the way and, and, and you've lost some money in hedges. You got to worry about taxes. Maybe it's not, you know, by the way, you've got to get all four remaining people to agree on the hedge and all it takes is one person to say my path is better or maybe they outlaid yeah. a little bit more when they've hedged so it's not like it's like it's not this automatic where you see 9.7 you hedge your 2.3 and it's it's not like you own you're automatically going to get that much money so it's a lot tougher to say is just go ahead and hedge and uh, chop it rather and uh and all four are going to get equal money because it's not gonna it doesn't always work out that way so so good luck to everybody who is remaining uh, in, in Survivor. Um, I wish That's I was speed. one hopefully of them. Hopefully the bartender doesn't pick your team. I am not. I was going to say, and hopefully the bartender does not do to you what he did to the six people with Denver Ladder. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that would not be good. All right, Bear, before we get to our best bets, let me recap the two wagers you've made so far today. You have Seattle hosting Pittsburgh, minus three and a half. 
And you have New Orleans plus three on the road at Tampa Bay. All right, Bear, what is your best bet for the NFL Week 17? My best bet is a game with a team that people might be considering uh, in Survivor this week, and that's okay. Indianapolis Colts. Uh, the Colts playing three and a half against the Ravens, the Raiders, rather. Uh, we all saw the, the Raiders win a game. I mean, of all of the dumb games in the NFL this year, with like ridiculous results and the way they got there, <laughs> like that was the dumbest game of them all. The, the two Patrick yeah, Mahomes, Mahomes bonehead plays, allowing two non-offensive scores for the Raiders. Uh, Raiders not completing a pass for three quarters. Like they, it was just a complete anomaly. It was more about bad Kansas City than it was good Raiders. The Raiders cannot go on, cannot go to Indianapolis with that offensive performance again and, and expect to win that game. Now, the Colts defense obviously is nowhere near as good as the Chiefs defense, so I, I do think Aiden O'Connell will complete a pass over the final three quarters. But uh, the, the Colts are night and day uh, home road. They, they were terrible last week. Uh, against Atlanta going home now with an opportunity to still make the playoffs. I, I think I think we're going to see a really good performance from the Colts here. I, I think they're going to win this game comfortably. I laid the three and a half with the Colts. And if you are alive in Survivor and you haven't used the Colts, I, I, I would make that a pretty, uh, I would put like an extra check mark by that and kind of re-examine that game when you're looking to make your final decision. The traditional score for the Chiefs Raiders game was 14 to six. The Chiefs scored 14 points on offense. The Raiders scored six bear. They scored twice <laughs> on defense, right? That, that weird trick play with Mahomes fumble and then Mahomes threw a pick six. The very next play, by the way, uh, to Jack Jones, who who <laughs> who faked giving a ball to a kid in the stands, um, which is just great robbery material. That kid's forever gonna hate the Raiders. It was fantastic. Um, I'm gonna stick with the Chiefs uh, for my best bet. I'm going Chiefs Bengals under 44 and a half. This number has felt very high uh, to me all week, Bear. Um, let's start with the Chiefs offense. We talked about them. I mentioned earlier, they're just not good right now. And they're playing a Bengals defense who's not as good as been in the past, but the Bengals have played the Chiefs very well, right? They, they've been like their nemesis for years defensively. They find ways to, so to stop them for many, many quarters on end. I mean, they didn't score the entire half, right, in the AFC Championship game. So you have a Bengals defense knows how to play Chiefs offense. It doesn't have any weapons. I, I just don't think they're going to score. On the other side, Chiefs defense right now, second in, in, in total scoring defense, 17.7 points per game. The Jake Browning thing seemed to end last week, as we've seen with backup quarterbacks throughout the year, Bear, where, you know, they have a couple good games and eventually it kind of sets in they're, 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 they're a backup. Um, and so the Chiefs defense has to play well for them to win this game. So this game, to me, is very low scoring. I have under 44 and a half. Hopefully I hit one of these, Bear. I think I've lost like eight straight best bets here on the NFL side, which is funny because – my contest this year is, is incredible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, my contest this year has been incredible. Uh, so I'm doing well on that side of things. Um, but uh, yeah, my best bet has not been good here. Hopefully, we break it this week w w with an under. Um, I think this number closes much lower than this. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll see. And before we get out of here, guys, I want to remind you about the Fox. Super 6. It's not too late to play the free Fox Super 6 game for Week 17. You just download the Fox Sports app right now and make your picks for a chance to win your share of $10,000 in weekly cash prizes. Yeah, well, we got that column up. and It's so funny how that how that can go with the uh, with the best bets. Like, I know like, I'm like the opposite of that. Like in the, uh, the Friday Football Invitational that I'm in with Circa, I think my best bet record is like 12 and three or 13 and three or something like that this year. However, I'm not having the success this year with the overall picks uh, as I am with the bet, which, which is disappointing. So it is, it, it's a, a silly hobby that we have and, and a silly uh, yes. thing we have to do week in and week out, but we, but we love it. And I don't know what we'd be doing without it. So um, hopefully we, hopefully we got a three and zero this week. We, um, Let's do it. Or, or, Let's do it. Let's have three a day. Oh, 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 four, or four and oh, include. Yeah, that number seemed 44 and a half. Like, I mean, the, the only too high. The only thing I can see, the only thing that I can see sabotaging that w would just be like Chiefs non-offensive scores. Like, like, like that that would be the only way I could see that going over 44 and a half in that game. Because yeah. like, like you mentioned, the Bengals D has done well against the Chiefs in the past and the way the Chiefs offense is right now. 
I just think they're more content. And, and Will brought up a good point in the in the group chat about that. Maybe you see a lot more Mahomes running in this game. Just you know, let's yeah. wrap the division up. Let's not let's just get that out of the way. That way we don't have to worry about it. So another um, yeah, another, another fun week. So I'm happy to uh, happy to yeah. be back. Good to good to chat with you. Back, I'm buddy. I, I am too. I, like I said, I'm, I, I like your uh, your holiday gift better than my holiday gift. I got a, uh, a, a new shoulder, and you you got, you, got, you got a dog that you can play with. You, you can you can wrestle around. Yes, I, I'm, I'm in a spring for that, that's fun stuff. So again, appreciate everybody uh, listening, downloading. Uh, appreciate all the the good words, the rating, and reviewing. Uh, check out the YouTube channel as well uh, to, to watch the uh, digital show as well. Jeff, Sammy, P, and Will. I am fair, and remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.